Okay, so the Backstreet EQ is a transparent mastering and mix bus shelving EQ. Uh, to simplify that, uh, this is a unit that uh, probably makes most sense to put on um, a mix bus. In other words, where you route all your music channels through or all your bus channels or perhaps uh, all your vocals are running through a bus. Um, you would apply this plug in to kind of glue the whole thing together. At least that's the general idea. The Boot EQ is a musical sounding mixing EQ and a preamp simula uh, simulation. Uh, long story short guys, what you have here is essentially a channel strip. So uh, kind of on the, uh, like on the old school expensive mixing consoles, they all have a strip that adds a, a character, a certain warmth quality to it. Um, that's what essentially this is. It's kind of like a channel strip. So just imagine that you have a channel when you put this thing on it, you're basically running the signal of that channel through an expensive uh, mixing council. Okay, so really, really nice EQ here. All right, next up, we've got the Density MK2. This is uh, a smooth and versatile dynamic processing on the stereo bus. Again, what you have here is essentially a compression unit uh, that works best or is intended to work on uh, uh, some sort of a mixing bus for your drums, your music, what have you. All right, moving on. Um, this is the Epic Verb, uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's a, it's a reverb and it's modeled after uh, older vintage reverb gear, like the old uh, metal boxes they used to sell for like three grand that basically all it did was just uh, provide reverb. All right, moving along, the Ferric TDS. Uh, basically what this is, is a tape a dynamic simulator. In other words, it's kind of like you have a tape machine at your house. Uh, I actually like to use tape simulators on the master bus to basically warm up my whole mix and give it that kind of fat two-inch tape reel sound, okay? Moving along. The nasty DLA, really love this delay. It's a classic chorus echo device with tape delay simulation. Let's just cut that short and basically say this is a very hip, very cool uh, filter delay. Uh, basically, to simplify this, this this is a delay that doesn't just um, you know echo the same phrase. It actually modulates the echoes and filters the cue. Um, and just throws it around really, really in interesting ways. Not your typical delay, really love this delay. All right, next up, what we have here is the Nasty VCS. This is a virtual console strip. So basically, just like the Bootsy EQ that I told you, just imagine that that's a um, strip from a, uh, a very expensive mixing console. What he's created here is basically a virtual console strip. So this console doesn't exist, he basically took the concept of a channel strip from like an expensive SSL board and basically just designed it virtually, probably not to have any sort of the limitations that the other boards do. Um, but also keep in mind, you know, uh, that this this doesn't have the, the, the character and maybe the grit that um, maybe the Boots EQ does. I've played with this plugin and um, it's, it's very nice, but it's also, it's very clean and, uh, you know, it, which is great sometimes. Anyway, let's not get stuck there. Let's move along. Prefix. What should you know about the prefix? It's a pre-mixing and audio alignment tool. Uh, again, to simplify it, this thing is basically something you put on a channel if you feel like um, the thing is out of whack. By out of whack, I mean, uh, you know, the, the panning is a little funky or it needs some sort of uh, phase adjustment or some modulation or gain adjustment. It's really, this isn't really so much a, um, you know, tweak the sound out type of an effect as much as it is a get the track ready, uh, you know, and kind of balanced out to be mixed and to be cued and have effects applied to it. So that's why he calls it the prefix. Um, you got to use this one sparingly, and I, I would think this would be something that if you're a really trained engineer, you might find really beneficial. I, I probably don't hear most of the flaws in my individual tracks to even throw this thing on. All right, let's move along. All right, what do we got here? We've got the, the Rescue. Uh, the Rescue MQ2 is basically an envelope-dependent signal amplification and saturation in a mid side configuration. All right, let me, all right. So basically what I think he's doing here is 
he's giving you a tape saturation. So again, you're getting that warm tape feel, right? You're getting the fuzz. However, the way he's got it set up here, he's got the mid and side buttons. So basically what you can do is, let's say you have a bass sound. You can make the mid, the, the center of that bass, you can basically uh, make that have one sort of warmth, you know, like really not juicing it through the, the tape saturation so much. And then when you click on the side and wi widen out the sides, you can give that a different saturation. So your middle and your left and rights kind of have their own color. And this should kind of give you more of a three-dimensional representation of the sound on a record. You know, at least that's the theory behind it. But basically it's a tape saturation uh, modeling thing with uh, mid and side functionality. Let's move along. All right, we got here the Tesla Pro. Uh, the Tesla Pro, uh, he notes it as a transient aware signal saturator. Now, what does that mean exactly? Um, it, it's aware of transients, meaning it feels your kick and your snare. So what it'll do is it'll give you sort of, again, a, a saturator, a tape saturator type of vibe but a lot of the old school tapes, when they give you the warmth, they also kind of crush your transients, like your kick drum and your snare drum. What this thing does is it's smart enough and it's got, you see it's got the transients knob. Basically, when you turn that transients knob to the right, you're allowing the kick and the snare, the transient sounds, the punchy quick attack sounds to go through while the rest of the mix actually has that warmth. So it's pretty much like a very smart um, tape saturation modeling uh, plugin. Okay. All right, let's move along. All right, next we have the Tesla SC. Really dig this thing. Uh, he's got it as a transformer style signal saturation. So, again, a saturator. What I like about this is um, where the previous one kind of gives it a warm tape thing. This thing sounds like it's being run through solid state gear, like it's being run through circuits. And it's almost like this is an exciter. Think of it as an exciter. In other words, it's distorting certain frequencies in your sound. In other words, um, it might be, you know, it might be hitting um, the, the 1K range to the 5K range and it's distorting that, but it's leaving everything else alone. This you'll see in the session, this is really nice because it instantly just gives something presence and body and you really get a feel like it's coming out of some real life gear, you know, so it's pretty cool. All right, moving along, uh, we've got the Thrill Seeker LA. I'm pretty sure he modeled this after the famous LA 2A. What is it? It's basically a limiting and leveling amplifier. It's essentially a limiter or, or a compressor uh, and it it's good, you know, if you want to really push your sound and put a roof on top of it so it doesn't uh, distort, this is a really good thing to use, all right? Let's uh, keep it moving. All right, Thrill Seeker VBL, what is this? This is an emulation of a vintage broadcast limiter from the 1950s. Okay, so basically it's a limiter compressor for voiceover, okay? So probably would be pretty good on any vocals you guys got. Uh, and... If you do like um, what are the the podcasts, you know this would be something you could just slap on your um, podcast and it'll sound like gold. Okay, uh, I did not get a chance to use this in the session uh, because there were no vocals; it was an instrumental. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, and lastly, we've got the Thrill Seeker XTC. What are these? These are a contemporary exciter built around a true parallel analog analog style des uh, equalizer design. Okay. Beats the hell out of me. Uh, basically, again, it's an exciter. And like I said, what do the exciters do? Exciters distort um, certain frequency uh, bands, uh, depending on how you set it. Uh, he's got one, he's got it in blue and he's got it in black. Really nice. Did end up using some of this in the session. Really, really nice. It really makes stuff pop when you need it to. 